let's call this video value type caveats. All right, that's just going to be a big list of various things to know about value types. Maybe they're important, maybe they're not. Maybe they'll help you understand why value types shot me in the foot when I first started to use them. First of all, let me do five. It's my favorite integral or integer literal. And five is actually an instance of an int, which int is a value type, which means um, if I make an int like so, then this defines some RAM and it will go on the stack and I can assign 5 to that int like so. And it probably, hopefully, doesn't hurt you too much to see me say take that instance of an int, dot on it, and now I can call various functions on that int. All right? But if I can call functions on, on an instance like so, I should be able to call functions on an integer like this. You see, I, we're not getting much IntelliSense help there, but sure enough, Five is an int, and I can call two string on it. Or I can say string stir gets five dot two string, and then or stir. And then I can come down here and say console write line stir f11 f11 f11. You see, we're compiling, we're running, and stir certainly has the character representation of this integer value. All right. Anyway, a little gotcha there. These these primitives certainly are uh, value types. Now let me show you. Uh, something else. I'm going to say int i gets 5 again. And then I want to know what, if, if, if this really is an object, even though down under the hood it's mostly considered just a 32 bit integer, but, but when we want it to be an object, .NET allows us to treat it like an object and it lets it behave like an object, that kind of thing. If I really want it to be an object, then, then I can say, hey, you know what? <sighs> Give me your type. All right? And before I actually do that, let's console write line i dot get type. What's going to print? When I do that, any ideas? Control F5. There you go. The actual type is system.int32. And I showed you how the compiler, when it sees int, it literally just replaces that with system.int32, like so. But now I'm curious, you know, it's 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 an object. What what is the uh what is the base type of an int 32? Alright, now I'm actually going to change this back to int just for emphasis. But I say, hey, you know, give me your type, and then what's your base type? Alright, let's control F5 that and see what happens there. Ooh, look at this. Huh? Value type? Didn't I say it was value type? I think it was. Well, if that's value type, then, then what is value type's base type? Alright, you see I can kind of dot here, dot, 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 dot. Well, value type's base type is object, which is the parent of all... you the all types in the C-sharp language. All right, now, if I come here and I say dot base type again and run that, well, now I'm looking at objects base type, which is null, and this is what happens when you print null. And if I try to dot further on that, um, this returns null, and so I try to dot on that, and that'll give us our wonderful friend the null reference exception. All right, anyway, hopefully I've proven there that the base type is is value type. Now let's uh let's make oops, let's make our class cow again, but I'm not going to put anything in there. And I'm going to say uh cow C gets new cow. Put one of those cows out on the heap. Console right line C dot hey, give me your type. Right? That should print cow, right? C's type is cow. Control F five. There we see it's a cow. And then what is cow's base type? All right, it's no longer a value type because it's. I, I said class here. What's the base type going to be? Well, if I run that, hey, it's directly object. All right, there's no value type there. The implied base class for any type in C sharp is object. If you don't don't type it, then the compiler will, and that actually replaces that. It it types this for you. System dot object, which the is the exact same as typing obj ect like so. But what if I come in here and, and say struct? All right, how's that going to change the base type? Can you guess? Hopefully it's pretty obvious at this point. Maybe it's not. Control F5 and gotta get rid of that. Control F5. There you go. Just by changing class to a struct, we're not we don't inherit directly from object. We inherit value type, and then value type inherits directly from object. I can say base type, base type, and then we'll see object. Like so, just the same as we saw with the int. And again, when we make our own structs, it's like making our own primitive types. Now, some caveats about value types you cannot inherit from them, like 
I can't say class my weird cow inherits from cow. Alright, the C sharp language by definition, it seals value types off, meaning they are not open for inheritance. If I try to build this, it'll say, hey, cannot drive from a sealed type cow. So there's something to take an effect. Now let me let me get the oh sorry, let me struct. I want to call it cow. And then let's let's uh I want to talk a little bit about uh, data members inside of a struct and initialization. So let me show you something to do with data initialization inside of a type. So let's do int num stakes again. And let's do float uh, ounces. I think that's what we call it. Ounces of milk. Like so. First things first. Value types. If, if, uh, if you create an instance of a value type. Okay, cow, see so gets new cow. You'll notice here it looks like I'm calling the parameter list constructor. All right, but I've already told you that with value types, when you say new whatever it is, that's the same as saying, hey, zero out the bits inside this cow. Now you might think, oh well, Jamie, I can I can define a constructor. I'm used to that. And then we can say num stakes gets five and uh, ounces of milk gets, I don't know, three point four. Sure, we can see, oh, we got the, we got, oh, that's got to be a float. I have to suffix, suffix it with an F in order for this to be a float. Anyway, uh, control shift B, let's build and say, hey, structs cannot contain explicit parameter lists, parameter lists, say that ten times, constructors, all right, structs for value types, and the definition of value types is, if you say new on it, that's just saying zero out all the bits, so we cannot override that behavior like so. But we can have constructors that take parameters. I can say um, int num stakes like that and then what we're used to down here I can say this dot num stakes gets five. Alright and let's, let's see if that builds. Build succeeded and then I can come here and say or not num stakes gets five. Num stakes gets num stakes. Then I can say hey this cow is going to have ten stakes in it and sure enough that builds. You can see build succeeded right here and I can run it and it executes just fine. But if I take this out, watch what happens. I'm going to just comment it out for now. Control Shift B, we get an error saying, hey, um, um, ounces of milk must be fully assigned before control is returned to the caller. All right, so when you define a constructor, that's cool, but it's up to you to ensure that you assign every data member of this value type to some legitimate value. It doesn't matter what the value is, as long as that value is compatible for that type. For example, 3.4 is compatible for float here. So so we, we have to assign to everything there. Now what if you got something that has lots of data members? Well chances are you shouldn't be doing that as a struct anyway in a value type. But now you're forced to say, well, ounces of milk uh, let's do ounces of milk one. We'll get zero, and ounces of milk two. We'll get zero, and you can see this is this is getting a little tedious. What's the? Uh, did I spell it wrong? Oh, I just don't have a one. But you can see this is going to get tedious, especially for five of these. Well, a little trick you can do with value types that you definitely cannot do with reference types is I can say, you know what? This gets new cow. Zero out everything for me. This instance zero it out for me and then I'm gonna change num stakes to whatever they pass in. Alright, ho hopefully that feels uncomfortable to you but let me build this prove it builds right here run it you can see it runs with no issue. Uh, that's okay with value types because all we're saying is this is the object and this in a value type means the actual object. This, unlike reference types, this does not reference an object out on the heap. It is the object. Right? This is the object and I want to zero out all the bits in that object. Now if I come up here and say, yeah, you know what, let's make it a class. Well now this won't compile because it's like, um, um, you can't, oh wait, I got to pass a number in here. Let's pass a number in here. Okay. Now here's the error I was trying to get to. Cannot assign to this because it is read only, which makes sense. It'd be kind of interesting if you could do this. This would be kind of if you let me just kind of draw how I think that would work if they allowed it to work, though it also doesn't make sense. So stack and heap, all right? And then we um, we say new cow, all right? So C is sitting here, and it's referencing this cow that we make, the new cow, which has 
a bunch of floats in it and that kind of thing. Really big cow. But then I say this, this is the, the implied pointer. It's like this gets new cow. It's, it's like uh, make a new cow and this is the new cow. No, it's this is the cow. Not this. The, 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 the. See, that doesn't work. However, with a value type, this is the object. Have a heyday. Zero it out if you want to. That's totally fine.